Hello, everyone. I'm Bin Lin Chen. I'm from Wuhan University and the Hubei Normal University. My topic is about the generic binary unpacking for Windows malware analysis. As we know, binary unpacking is a long-standing security problem. Our work being unpack is an efficient and anti-analysis resistant unpacking of multiple layer protected malware. As reported, there are over 18% malware samples are packed. The packed malware is one of the most threat to malware analysis. Today, binary packing technicals have evolved from the single layer packers to multiple layer packers. When the packet sample starts running, the original code is written in memory and get executed sometimes. This behavior is called written then executed. The written then executed behavior can be repeated for many times. Each time, the new generated code is called a layer. For example, the AC protect Packer has more than 216 layers. However, there are no silver bullet can sharply determine, de determine the end of multiple layer packing, unpacking because uh, there is, it has been proved to be an undecidable problem. For example, the malware panel is not necessary in the deepest layer. The current approach has to continuously monitor all possible written and executed layers to detect the original code with several heuristics. It contributes It contributes high runtime overhand to current general unpacking tools, making them too expensive to deploy. Another implication is that the binary packers often use different anti-analysis tricks to impede the unpacking approach. To monitor the possible written and excluded layers, the, the unpacking approach usually relies on the, the dynamic analysis system, such as debugging, VM, DBI, and uh, API hooking. However, these dynamic analysis systems are not transparent to packers. The event packer can fake print the ana analysis system and then terminate the Self unpacking progress. So far, the generic unpacking does not improve too much in the past decade. We consider the binary unpacking from a new angle. The packers con cons consistently obfuscate the standard use of API calls. The binary packers keeps evolving themselves to deal with the unpacking approach. However, one thing maintains stable, that is, the malware pen node always interacts with Windows OS to fear-fear their malicious behavior, such as process injection, CNC communication, the malware often use user-level Windows API rather than the native API. That's because most API semantic information is missing at a native level. On Windows OS, there are two ways to call user-level API, that is type 1 and type 2. For type 1, type 1 is a standard API resolution. It uh, resolves a Windows API's address by visiting P handles at important address table. Important address table, also called IoT, is an address lookup look table when calling APIs exported by a DL. Uh, next, type 1. 
for tab 2. Tab 2 is dynamic API resolution. It makes function calls explicitly, not DL, and obtain an important function address at the wrong time. That means there are at least two APIs, node library and the get process address are kept in IoT. We know that both tab one and tab two need IoT. We also find that there are two exceptions in which IoT is not required. For example, uh, the first one is the API addresses uh, can be hard-coded in, ban in binary. However, the various Windows OS version and uh, ASLR made, made it has made it <coughs> put an, um, made it hard to to achieve it. Uh, second one is shared code has to acquire the needed API addresses without visiting LT. However, Developing the malicious behavior using shared code has many constraints. Therefore, we do not think these two exceptions as practical. For packers, when the packer packed a binary, it usually erases the IoT. We find that there are three benefits of IoT raising for packers. First, removing payload IoT can prevent a deep insight into high-level semantics of malware. Second, it can impede the reconstruction of a full functional version of the original binary. Third, it can further reduce the packet code size. Uh, these are the three benefits. Having raised the IoT, the unpacking routine will rebuild a new IoT at the wrong time before the execution of original code. Besides, a local IoT is attached to unpacking routine as well. The unpacking routine itself has two core APIs for various purposes, such as detecting debugging environment and rebuilding the IoT of original code. We use the malware who pingle packed with FSG packer as an example. The figure A shows the original who pingle sample. The IoT has totally 575 APIs. The figure B shows the packet hooping in disk view. The original LT is erased and uh, it also attached a uh, unpacking routine IoT. There are two APIs in unpacking routine IoT. They are node library and uh, get process address. These two APIs are used to rebuild the original IoT in memory. Figure C shows the packet hooping at the wrong time with me memory view. The original LT is rebuilt. There are 575 API in the rebuilt INT. This figure takes the pack of FSG as example, but it also shows the common feature of other packers. Based on the common future, we find a new heuristic to determine the end of unpacking. That is, if an API call is invoked through looking up a rebuilt IoT, it indicates that the original code has been restored. The control flow has reached OEP, OEP already. Being unpacked, hooks API calls and find the first one whose related IoT is rebuilt at the wrong time. Then, tracing back from that API, being unpacked is able to locate OEP within a very short distance. Being unpacked in this way, being unpacked has a distinct advantage. 
That is, it sidesteps multiple layer unpacking. Since being unpacked need hood API of the package sample, there are many options are available for being unpacked, such as user level API hooking and kernel level API hooking. For user level API hooking, there are many inventions to this API hooking. This table shows common user level API hooking inventions adopted by several packers such as stolen code, child process, process hollowing, and the crash hooking model. For kernel level hooking, there, are, there, there is a semantic gap between kernel level API and the user level API. We cannot find the objective mapping, mapping between user level APIs and the kernel level APIs. Some user level APIs do not invoke any native API at all, such as get process address. The limitation of user level API, kernel, user level API hooking and the kernel level API hooking turn, out, turn our attention to another API monitor method, that is DI hijacking. As developers often know a custom DL by its name rather than its path. DL hijacking exploits the DL path search orders to hijack the DL loading. The Microsoft has realized the default DL path search order can be misused to load malicious DL. So, a more restrict, a more strict restric restriction comes up for core system DR such as kernel three two DR. When a executable file not the kernel three two DR, the Windows OS will provide the full path of the kernel three two DR. In this way, the traditional DI hijacking cannot hijack the kernel 32 DR. Our approach, we use kernel level DI hijacking to hijack the kernel 32 DR first. We find nice the window on Windows OS, uh, it's good about file usually use the node library API to node a DL. And then we find a code chain from node library API to its native API, that is NT map view of section. We use kernel level hooking to hook the NT map view of section. Our function, my NT map view of section not the custom-made DR instead of the original DR. In this way, we can hook the kernel 32 DR. In our paper, we also consider the, the possible attacks to be unpacked, such as some we find night some custom nodes does not call node library at all. And uh, some malware, you can use the fake rebuild IoT and the fake API call to attack being unpacked. And last, they can also use kernel level hooking detection to bypass being unpacked. Uh, you can see the countermeasures in our papers. In our evolution, we do the comparative evolution with three recent unpacking tools. The results show that being unpacked achieve 100% success rates and a better 
our hand. For the unpa for unpacking wider um, wider packed malware, being unpacked succeeds in most of samples. However, we find that some packers attempt to detect the environment by checking the movement of mouse curves. We leave it as our future work. We also do the hook evasion evaluation. The rat show nets being unpacked outperforms other sand booths such as cooker sand booths. We can deal with the evasion types such as child process, stolen code, process hooling, hollowing, and uh, crash ho hooking module. We will provide a free online bin unpack in the future. Thank you. Well, um, anybody has some questions? Well, let me start with a question that comes to my mind. You said that uh, the point where you find when the uh, packing process has finished and when the execution starts is by looking or hooking at the IAT. Is it uh, possible for an attacker who wants to evade your detection to split the IAT across uh, several processes that then use, for example, inter-process communication to make it exponentially more difficult uh, with the payload is spread across several address spaces? Uh, the the malware can use the fact IoT, use fact to attack the being unpack. Uh, however, we find that uh, the original IoT should be rebuilt before they jump to the OEP. So the OEP and the OE, uh, if we, if we can check the OEP, we can identify this fake IoT. Uh, I meant if it is in, in, in separate processes. Mm. It's okay, maybe we can uh, talk offline if you don't have an answer at the moment. Um, do we have any other questions? Yes, uh, could you come to the microphone? Hi, uh, which uh, data set did you use? Which malware data set uh, did you use? The website we are, we are provide on, on our homepage. Uh, we are, uh, yes. Okay, which features did you consider uh, in order to discover if the malware was packed or not? Uh, we the the online the online the online being unpacked is used to uh, unpack the sample. Um, we do not we do not check if it is a uh, malware. We can use uh, we can sub the sample into the uh, well total such as for example. Okay. Uh, so did you query? Did you use a query on virus total? Uh, we we restore the origin. Uh, we we dump the process of the sample, and uh, we restore the original code and the original IoT. Sometimes it can be a working PV, but sometimes it's not a be. Ah, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi. 
Uh, I'm very curious about your uh, paper topic. Uh, I have two questions. First, uh, as I know, the IAT uh, can be modified regardless of the packing. Uh, can you guarantee that it is reliable information for unpacking mechanism? And second question is, um, there were many papers related on, on unpacking malware, but they have weakness about the packer, Domida. Uh, how do you solve it? Uh, in our in our in our evolution, we find that all the packers use use the origin IoT. Uh, we find several reasons for for them. Uh, that is the three reasons. Um, and uh, we also find some papers find uh, this uh, IoT using behaviors, but uh, they do not use it to unpack. We we use this behavior to unpack. the The most uh, challenging of our work is that you should uh, uh, distinguish the origin, the unpacking routine IoT and uh, rebuilding IoT. If when the, when the origin code, if if an API is uh, code from the rebuilt IoT, then we consider the, the origin code is, is, is stored. Uh, in this figure, if we can find the nice, the, as, as, shown, as shown in figure C, we find that in memory, the packet sample we are, has two IoT. One is the unpacking routine IoT, another is the rebuilt IoT. We compare the IoT with the disk view, you can find that uh, if we compare figure A and the figure C, we learn find that the original IoT is a uh, new IoT in memory. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Um, unfortunately, the time is up uh, for questions. Bin Lin, thank you very much. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.